I'm not sure why these people would want to spend a holiday together, let's put it that way. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hi, my name is Komaskat. If you're new here, welcome. I read books and make music, so that's what you will find on my channel. Here is me talking about the three books I read this month. The first book I read this month was Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which is the first book in the Brown Sisters series by Talia Hibbert. I actually, if you watched my February reading wrap up, then you know that I read the books out of order by mistake, and I talked about Take a Hint, Danny Brown in that previous video, and I can confirm what I said there, that is, I really, really enjoyed Take a, no, wait, Get a Life, Chloe Brown more than Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I like the characters more, I like the setting more. We're following our main girl, Chloe, who is suffering from chronic pain and chronic and therefore chronic fatigue. She can't walk for a long extended periods of time. She can't do any strenuous physical exercise. And so for that reason, she's slowly been isolating herself more and more and convincing herself that she can live by herself without a man or friends or whatever because no one has the patience to deal with her chronic illness and her being tired or not being up for, for lots of fun things all the time. Although Personally, I don't, I don't suffer from chronic illness, but I never feel like going out either, so. So she has this, I, I don't want to say anything to spoil it, but romance books aren't really spoilerable because I feel like they never really have a twist. Like you know right from the beginning who she's going to end up with. Anyway, we follow her story as she gets closer to the superintendent of her building, Redford Morgan, who was really fun for me to read. And there's a lot of playful banter. There's a lot of um, fun dialogue. It's just a really cutesy, feel-good romance if you're in the mood for one of those. I like the characters more than Take a Hint, Denny Brown, because Redford is an artist and Chloe is obsessed with notebooks. So I guess that I kind of felt a little bit closer to them that way. But either way, I think it, it was also a better storyline. It was, it's an enemies to lovers trope rather than friends to lovers, fake dating that was in Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And it was just really fun and cutesy and romancy and heartwarming. So if you're in the mood for romance books, then check this one, definitely check this series out. I personally think I'm gonna take a break before reading if I ever get to read, what's the third one's name? Act Your Age, Eve Brown, that's it, that's the third one. Just because I'm not really a big romance reader and I'm not really in the mood for romance and one book was okay, two books, what made two books doable was the fact that I really liked the second book more than the first one. But I think I'm just done with romance for a while and I really don't feel like reading any more romance. So fun read and then moving on. The second book I read is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. We're following a group of friends that has chosen to spend New Year's and New Year's Eve, their New Year's holidays, in a very, very secluded place in Ireland and there's literally nothing there. There's just woods and cold and everything in like, it's not reachable easily. There's just one tiny train station and everyone is suspicious. Lucy Foley is great at writing these really fast paced thrillers that are whodunits where you, basically everyone could have done it. Everyone is suspicious because obviously, I mean, you're spending a week or whatever that is in a very secluded location where if you get hold up with a snowstorm, then literally no one can come get you until they send a helicopter. So what's going to happen? Clearly someone is going to turn up dead. And then you get the story told from multiple points of view. So you get, I think it's like there's six characters and you get the, the, the viewpoints of four characters. I found it to be great. It was fun. There's two couples and then no, wait, it's seven characters, and then the story is told through the viewpoint of four characters. There's three couples, and then the single odd one out, Katie, and then there's Miranda, the beautiful one, who is married to Julian. There's a gay couple, and then there's Mark, who is with Emma, and Emma's kind of like the newbie in the group. She hangs out with Miranda all the time. She was the last one to fall into that group of friends because the other six have been friends since uh, college since Oxford and so they 
they fall into these roles that were the same ones that they used to have at university. Um, so Miranda's the beautiful one and they all have these very weird group dynamics, these very... I'm not sure why these people would want to spend a holiday together, let's put it that way. They don't seem all that friendly, I guess they just... I suppose it's one of those situations where you feel like you're still linked to the same group of people that you hung out with when you were a lot younger and then you just don't really have that much in common anymore because everyone's moved on. But yeah, this was really fast paced and it was fun to read and it got me through an afternoon where I was cleaning the balconies, so did its job. I really enjoyed this. I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's looking for a fast paced thriller. So many people have mentioned that it sounds really similar. It reads really similar to her other well-known book, which is The Guest List. And I agree, but to a certain extent, in the sense that it's told through multiple points of view. So definitely that's a similarity, but at the same time, the story is different. Yes, yeah, someone turns out dead, but I mean, it's a thriller book and she's a thriller writer. Someone is bound to turn up dead all the time. If we're going to count the amount of, I don't know, Stephen King books where someone turns up dead, then that doesn't mean they're all similar. I agree that there are some similarities to the story. I think what helped in my case was that I read the two books more than a year apart, so that didn't bother me in the least. And I find that Lucy Foley's books are great as audiobooks because there's a full cast of characters and they're just really fun to listen to because of all the different voices and the different acting. So yeah, definitely check that out if you're looking for a fast paced thriller. The third book I read this month on the theme of productivity and always feeling behind and um, always late for everything, which I'm not, but that's the overwhelming perception that I have on a day-to-day -day basis, is Getting Things Done by David Allen, um, i.e. the founder of the GTD method, the Getting Things Done method. And I must say I was very skeptical, but I ended up implementing some of the principles in the Getting Things Done method in my own workflow. It's too early to say if they're working yet, but I think I'm going to keep some of the principles again of the method. Um, at heart, this is essentially a system where you make lists, lots and lots and lots of lists. And every list is corresponds to a project where a project is defined as something that has more than one task to get done. And then what you do is you identify the next step for every single list and then every single project and then weekly review them. And I'm really bad at them because I don't even look at them daily. But this has helped me to keep track of everything that's going on. There's... Sometimes I feel like this book went a bit too far. There is this whole system that David Allen designed where supposedly you, I don't remember what it was called, but um, you have this system for future events where basically you have like 30 separate filing folders for the 30 days of the month you're in and then you have the following months. So you have a folder for, say we're in March now, so I would have a folder for all of the 31 days of March, and then I'd have a folder for April through to December. And then every single day, I need to look at what's in that day for my corresponding day of March, move it through, and then when April comes along, move everything that's in the April folder into the 30 April, single files and I find that that's like crazy because to me it, it's nuts it, it sounds completely nuts because to me when you're spending more time organizing than actually doing there's something wrong with your organizational system I feel like organization has to help you be more productive as opposed to spend time feeding itself if that makes sense so that definitely did not get implemented but I did um, adopt a task management system from Frank Thomas, which sort of is similar to the getting things done method. He has this task management template that I, I borrowed, but it's free. So I'm going to link it down below and it's absolutely great. That man is a genius with Notion. And I modified it to suit my own needs. I think I'll be tweaking the system as we go on and as, uh, as I need it. But yeah, overall this was an interesting book and it definitely gave me some good tips on what to do and definitely some good ideas of what not to do, even though David Allen does it. And yeah, I'll see how it goes on and maybe make a video about how I manage my day-to-day -day tasks if I don't completely fail at that in the next 
few months. Let me know what books you read. I feel like I didn't have time to do anything. I was just so worried with work all the time that reading just kind of fell on the back burner. But to be honest, everything else just kind of fell on the back burner as well. It was just, my focus was on surviving the work week and then collapsing, waiting for the next work week. So I didn't really get anything done that I wanted to do, the artistic, creative stuff. And I'm just really tired. So I will see you in my next video. Bye.